object versus mesh. This was for me the most confusing thing as a beginner in Blender. Here are some examples. How many objects are there in this scene? One object. In this scene, we have two objects. This cube is two times bigger than this cube. The scale of this object is one. What is the scale of this object? It is also one. In this scene, we have two cubes. Why does the bevel on this cube behave as expected? And on this cube gives us these stretched results. All of these have to do with mesh and object data blocks. So first, we are going to have a look at what they are and how they work together. And then we will come back to these examples and they will all make sense. By default, when we create a cube, this is what we get. An item named cube. And once we open it, we can see it contains another item also named cube. So what are we looking at here? This here is our object data block. And this here is our mesh data block. So first things first, what is an object? In the Blender manual, an object is referred to as an entity. This is because there are a lot of different objects in Blender. For example, a camera object, a light object, an empty object, or a mesh object. An object is simply a container that holds different types of data. In this video, we are talking about a mesh object. For a mesh object, I find it easier to understand what it is if we picture it as an invisible box. So this is a visual representation of a mesh object. It is an invisible box with an origin point. This origin point determines the location, rotation, and scale of the object. For example, if I scale this object along the x-axis, it will be scaled like this. But if I now move the origin point and place it to the left, it will be now scaled like this. The same goes for rotation, for example. I am rotating around the origin point. So now if I set the origin point back to the center of the object, it will now rotate like this. So the object's transformation are determined by the origin point. Okay, so what is a mesh? A mesh is a collection of vertices, edges, and faces. These elements combined together define the shape of your mesh. In this case, the mesh is shaped like a monkey head. Now let's have a look at the relationship between the two. We can see this relationship in the outliner. The mesh data block is a child of the object data block. This is important. This means that if you move, rotate, or scale your mesh, the object is not affected. But if you edit your object, the mesh will be affected. To switch between the two levels in the viewport, we use this dropdown here. In object mode, we are working at the object level. And in edit mode, we are working at the mesh level. So now we know what they are and how they affect each other. But this still does not explain why this is a single object. For this, let's have a look at this object. This object, or this box, contains a mesh data block. The mesh data block contains geometry in the shape of a monkey head. I am going to switch to edit mode. We are now working at the mesh level. That is, we are inside the object. The geometry we currently have in the mesh data block is this. However, we can add more. To do this, I press Shift A and add a cone, for example. I will also add a torus. 
because we are working at the mesh level, the geometry that we added is inside the same object. We can achieve the same result by joining multiple objects together. In this scene, we have three objects, each with its own mesh data. I'm going to select them all and go to Object, Join. We now have one object with one mesh data. Even though this is all now one mesh data, I can still edit each piece separately. To do this, go to Edit Mode, select any component of the piece you want to edit, and press Ctrl L. We have now selected all the linked geometry. Let's have a look at the second example. We are working in object mode. This cube has a scale of 1. And this cube, even though it's much bigger, also has a scale of 1. Remember that we are in object mode. This is the scale of the object. So how did I do this? I'm going to delete the big cube and duplicate the small one. Remember the hierarchy of the data blocks? The mesh data block is a child of the object data block. So any transformation we apply at the mesh level will not affect the object level. So I'm going to switch to edit mode and scale the mesh up. And now switch back to object mode. So now because I scaled the mesh at the mesh level, the object scale has not been affected. This is why both these objects have the same scale. Let's have a look at the key difference between scaling in edit mode and scaling in object mode. When we scale in edit mode, we are working at the mesh level. So now I'm going to make this mesh two times bigger. The scaling is directly applied. That is, this mesh now has this size. And as you can see, the object scale is still 1. Because any edit we make at the mesh level does not affect the object level. Here I'm going to scale the mesh, but at the object level. I'm going to make it two times bigger. Visually, the result is the same. However, there is a key difference. The scaling is happening at the object level, and this scaling is not applied. That is, I can change my mind and bring it back to its original size. So when scaling at the object level, the scaling is not applied, and you are multiplying the size of the mesh. Let me show you how this works in Blender. Let's have a look at these two cubes. The size of the mesh is 2 by 2 by 2. For comprehension, I wrote this in the outliner at the mesh level 2 meters. The scale of the object is 1. In the outliner, at the object level, I wrote scale 1. I'm going to scale this cube, but at the mesh level. To do this, we go to Edit Mode, select all, and scale by 2. So now, the size of this mesh is 4 meters by 4 meters by 4 meters. I'm going to write it in the outliner. So what is happening for this object? is we have a mesh that is 4 meters in size, which is then at the object level multiplied by 1, which gives us 4. 4 meters multiplied by 1, which gives us 4. This object I will scale to the same size, but at the object level. So I'm going to click and drag, and enter 2. So now visually, the result is the same. But what is happening here, is we are scaling at the object level. So in this case, we have a 2 meter mesh that we are multiplying by 2, which gives us 4. 2 meter mesh multiplied by these sliders, which gives us 4. The difference is also that this scaling is not applied. So if I bring it back to 1, my mesh is back to its original size. And if I multiply by 4, I now have an 8 meter mesh. That is, a 2 meter base mesh size 
multiply by 4 at the object level, which gives us 8. Now that we understand this, we can have a look at our last example. Why is the bevel on this object behaving as expected, but on this object it is stretched? First, let's have a look at the object. This object has a scale of 1. I'm going to write it in the outliner. This object is scaled by 4 on the x-axis. I'm going to write it as well. Now let's have a look at the hierarchy in the outliner. Just like the mesh data block, the bevel modifier is a child of the object data block. So what is happening is the bevel modifier is applied to the mesh, which is then multiplied by the scale at the object level. So in the case of this object, the bevel is applied to this mesh, which is then multiplied by 1. So we do not have any stretching. For this object, the bevel is applied to this mesh, which is then multiplied by 4 on the x-axis. This is why we have some stretching. I can reproduce what is happening on this cube. First, apply a bevel and then stretch the cube on the x-axis. What we can do to fix the issue is to apply the scale. So we select the object and go to Object, Apply, Scale. But why did this fix our problem? We currently have an 8 meter cube. We get to those 8 meters by starting with the 2 meter mesh and multiplying it by 4 at the object level, which gives us 8. When we apply the scale, we take the scale from the object level and apply it to the mesh directly. After that, the scale at the object level is back to 1. I'm going to illustrate what happens in the outliner. So we take the scale from the object level and apply it to the mesh directly. 2 multiplied by 4 gives us 8 meters. The scale at the object level is back to 1. Now I'm going to do it for real in the viewport. So why did this fix our issue? If we look at the outliner, we can see now that the bevel is applied to the 8 meter mesh, which is then multiplied by 1. So we do not have any stretching anymore at the object level. Alright, I hope it now makes sense. I find it important to have this foundation and understand how it works. Now in the next video, we are going to have a look at how we can utilize this knowledge in very useful techniques. See you in the next video.